Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shamla Devi from MBA Department, International Business Studies, Acharya Nagarjuna University. Today we are going to study about evaluation of management thought. So, what is an evaluation of management thought? When does it start? It? What were the theories that were evolved in management? Okay, now coming to evaluation of management thought. Management as a functional concept is as old as the human civilization ever since human beings started living together in groups, techniques of organization and management were evolved. Studying history doesn't mean arranging events in chronological order. It means developing an understanding of the impact of external forces of an organization according to that. This means that History is not arranging the events in a uh, chronological order. It is meant for developing and improving, understanding the impact of the forces of organization in order to evolve the management. Okay. So, history means we have to take those inputs for the development of the study, the theories. So, Daniel Wren examined social, political and economic forces to have influenced organizations and the practice of management. So, development or evolution of management have done day to day. It has developed by taking different forces like um, social, political and economic forces. All these have influenced the development and practices in the management it is a systematic and analysis of management as a science it has begun in the year from 20th century after the industrial revolution basically if we have, if we want to study the roots of evolution of management thought means there were three forces which drived for the evolution of management thought okay first one is human civilization second one is division of labor third one is industrial revolution so what is human civilization if we take human civilization from uh, egyptian culture from the days of egyptians egyptian civilization means uh, we know that pyramids were created there pyramids were built beautifully in egypt so at that time there is no this much of technology or advancement in order to create those pyramids okay but at that time with the uh, use of management with the application of management they have done that pyramids okay so fr starting from uh, egyptian civilization we can see management without management they cannot build those pyramids because it involved many people they have to coordinate many people they have to assign the work to many people so while doing so many people are involved in a work means definitely managing the persons managing the individuals is needed because he, uh, each and every person is, is assigned to a special or a specific work so without management doing such work will be impossible so from that civilization stage next division of labor division of labor means actually the concept uh, division of labor is studied from uh, an economist known as Adam Smith okay he wrote in his book wealth of nations about the concept of division of labor so <coughs> what does division of labor means division of labor means breaking down complex task into smaller or simpler task okay that can be easily done by the workers so that is known as division of labor so by the application of division of labor, he stated, Adam Smith has stated that 
division of labor led to the increase in economic growth so that's why by the application of division of labor we may so we may see the economic growth next one is industrial revolution okay so industrial revolution is nothing but application or usage of machines in place of men at that time people were more uh, relied on factories to work in factories in order to sustain okay in order to create wealth in order to create economy they have worked in the factories at that time but even though more number of people were working in the factories but the productivity or the efficiency in the workers is not seen in that time this uh, industrial revolution due to the inefficiency of the workers and low productivity this led to the evolution of management thought so these were the three forces uh, majorly we can say about the evolution of management thought okay so first one is human civilization second one is division of labor that is given by adam smith an economist and finally industrial revolution so all this led to the evolution of management thought okay and under evolution of management thought we will study about three concepts one is classical approach neo classical approach and modern approach okay under classical approach we will study three concepts known as scientific management bureaucracy administrative management okay and coming to neo classical approach here we'll study about the human relations approach behavioral approach coming to modern approach quantitative approach systems approach contingency approach operational approach all these will be studied these are the developments that were made in the management okay initially if we talk about classical approach what does classical approach says what were the studies of classical approach this classical approach is also known as a traditional approach or empirical approach uh, the main features regarding this uh, classical approach is uh, it is framed on the basis of experience of practicing managers principles are developed so these principles are used as guidelines for the practicing executive managers okay before that we are not having any standardized rules or any standardized principles or functions but on the basis of the experience of the practicing managers these principles were developed okay next and functions principles and skills of management all are, are considered useful and are applied in different situations and uh, here they emphasized uh, in classical approach uh, the three theories scientific bureaucracy administrative the three theories they have said that uh, formal education and training is emphasized for developing in uh, ma managerial skills in managers okay so uh, under classical approach the studies that we are going to see our first one is scientific management this is given by or this is propounded by frederick winslow taylor frank and lillian gilbert henry gang so many other also contributed to this scientific management but basically these three people have propounded this scientific management okay under this scientific management the first and foremost person is frederick w taylor or frederick winslow taylor so what does he stated about the scientific management a scientific management this is also known as taylorism okay so uh, taylorism this is related to f w taylor he aimed mainly to improve or he aimed mainly to maximize the productivity and uh, to optimize or to maximize the efficiency of the 
worker. So here maximization of productivity and efficiency both were seen in the scientific management and by minimizing the waste okay by minimizing the waste we have to increase the productivity and efficiency of the worker okay so how could we do this by applying the scientific methods to the study and design of work process De depending upon the work depending upon the job they are doing we have to apply the scientific methods and we have to study the work and design the work accordingly to increase or to maximize the productivity okay and at the same time maximizing the or optimizing the workers efficiency so um, for this there are certain principles were given by fw taylor so what are those four principles of scientific management so first one scientific study of work so what does scientific study of work means so it is a systematic study of work process to identify the most efficient ways of performing tasks it analyzes job and establishes standard procedure so here they will analyze the job so analyze the job in each and every step okay so how efficiently we can perform the job so an analysis will be made a study will be made and a scientific uh, application will be done that is known as a science of study so depending upon the science of study and application of the science we will try to increase the efficiency of the worker and productivity okay so for this uh, we can take example of a famous food franchisee known as uh, mcdonalds right from its inception to till today each and every food franchisee of mc all over the world it is applying the scientific management okay so if we take uh, this application science application uh, study of science application means uh, this core principle it is applying in its mc by uh, dividing the job which is known as a division of labor okay so it takes uh, it studied each and every step of the um, for example um, making a burger okay so it involves different steps from making to uh, adding pickles and sauce okay so uh, by performing this uh, analyzing this job means it increases the efficiency of the worker okay like that application of science of study next coming to second one time and motion studies so what does time and motion studies say it emphasizes uh, sorry it in, it is introduced to identify the most efficient ways of performing tasks worker movement and actions were carefully observed and timed to eliminate uh, unnecessary motions and identify the most time saving techniques okay here time and motion study is also studied uh, time and motion study means uh, it will analyze the worker movements also actions also how much time is he taking for preparing a particular for doing a particular job 